I know I said 100 days in the title of this video, but it's actually been more like 145 days since I've been using this watch. And in this video, we're gonna go over all of the details of the watch, as well as go over the things that I love most and the things that I wish were different about the Garmin Forerunner 945 LTE. Real quick, I do wanna remind you guys that Garmin did send me this watch for the purpose of this review, uh, but they aren't sponsoring this video and the ideas and the opinions within this video are mine alone. Uh, and sadly, I don't get to keep this watch. I'll be packaging it up and firing it back off to Garmin headquarters, uh, but I will try to leave a link in the description of this video to the best price that I can find. And I'll also try to find you guys a discount code if I can. And I think that'll help because it is an expensive watch. It's $650. So, you know, I'm guessing that Garmin will be very happy to know uh, that I didn't break this watch, scratch this watch, or, you know, damage the 945 LTE in any way that I can kind of tell. Uh, even though, you know, I was, you know, in no way gentle with this device. Uh, the biggest issue, you know, that I typically see with regards to durability on watches like this are scratches on the watch face, the lens itself. And, you know, currently I don't see anything here on this watch. The lens itself is made of Corning Gorilla Glass, which, you know, does make it scratch resistant, you know, to, you know, things like keys, if you reach for your keys in your pocket or something like that, but it's definitely not scratch proof. And in all honesty, you know, I would probably recommend that you guys, you know, grab some sort of cheap watch lens cover. Uh, and, you know, I'll go ahead and link some of those below in the description of this video as well. Uh, but that's kind of always my recommendation uh, to any watch that doesn't have one of those sapphire lenses. Those things are pretty bulletproof. But I've also had, you know, no issues with the 22 millimeter silicone strap. Uh, it's very similar to the, you know, 945 strap. Uh, which was very similar to the 935 strap. And I've actually, you know, moved that strap around from watch to watch. So I've actually been using it for the past five years on this watch. They hold up really well, you know, against uh, everyday wear uh, and chlorine and things like that. Uh, these straps are a little bit tricky to change uh, and replace. But if you do, you know, I'd recommend one of those quick release strap bands, uh, and then you can kind of pick whichever colors or whichever designs you want that way. And I also don't have any cracks on the optical heart rate sensor, which is, you know, another common location for damage. The 945 LTE uses the Garmin Elevate version four heart rate sensor, as opposed to the 945 that uses the older version. Personally, you know, I haven't noticed any sort of accuracy bump or any sort of difference in my testing, uh, but depending on, you know, your use case and maybe your skin tone, you may have different results with these heart rate monitors. Now, other than the durability of the device itself, you know, I'm guessing that a lot of you guys are very interested in these LTE features and the LTE service that's provided with this watch. You know, how frequently it's been something that I've used, uh, and whether or not I think it's worth the extra $50 to get the LTE model versus the original 945. And there's two things to keep in mind here. One, you know, it's not just 50 extra dollars, it's 50 extra dollars plus $7 a month or $6 a month if you do an annual contract for those LTE services. And, you know, secondly, uh, I don't think that you can look at it as, you know, just 50 extra dollars for the LTE options because the 945 LTE really is a very different watch than the 945. And I think when people look at the Garmin website, you know, it, it feels a little bit misleading. It kind of looks like you're just paying that extra 50 bucks for those LTE options. Real quickly, and I don't wanna dive too deeply into this, you know, the 945 LTE is actually a smaller watch. It's a bit lighter than the 945, uh, but also it does have that same screen size, so you're not losing anything that way. Uh, the internal GPS chip is different between these two watches, and in my testing, you do get better GPS accuracy with the LTE variety versus the 945. There's also, you know, a slight difference 
performance and battery life. Uh, and the optical heart rate monitor, as I mentioned before, has been updated on the 945 LTE. But maybe, you know, I'll make some sort of separate video doing, you know, a real in-depth side-by-side -side comparison between these two watches, and we can kind of dive deeper into that. Uh, but the point that I'm trying to make is that when you pay 50 extra dollars for this watch, you really are getting a very different watch. And you don't have to sign up for those LTE services. And I actually think, you know, that a lot of people might opt not to. The LTE services that you get aren't exactly what you might expect. These services, you know, are much more designed for uh, tracking and safety uh, rather than, you know, streaming and communication. Uh, for example, uh, this device has onboard music storage, but you can't stream music uh, over the LTE connection or anything like that. Uh, you could receive messages during live tracking events, uh, but currently you can't really reply over the LTE network. No uh, canned replies or anything like that. Uh, but over the past 100 days, I have been opting to turn on live tracking and live event tracking so that my wife can track me when I'm going out for a run, uh, but primarily when I'm out for longer bike rides. We've really only used the messaging, you know, just kind of to test out the feature, uh, but it's not something that we've relied on for communication. I, I typically bring a phone uh, for the most part. Uh, and thank goodness, you know, that I haven't had to use the emergency assistance features, which can send your emergency contacts, uh, your location, or send an emergency message to a professional emergency response coordination center uh, where they can work with your local emergency services. Uh, oddly enough, um, that seems to be the one location where you can kind of send replies uh, with some kind of canned messages right from the device. You know, other than that kind of keynote LTE feature, I'd say this watch is a really fantastic training tool. It handles all of the stuff that I love to do, swimming, biking, and running, and it handles them really well. As far as lap swimming goes, you, you know, I've talked about this before, uh, Garmin has consistently been uh, my preferred watch brand for doing lap swimming, uh, basically because most of the other brands really don't do it all that well. Uh, you'll have things like drill mode and stroke detection and just real ease of use when you're actually doing lap swimming with this watch. And then as far as open water swimming goes, uh, I was getting very accurate distance and pace from this watch uh, in comparison to the 945 when I was doing my testing uh, when the water was a little bit warmer. And then as far as cycling goes, you can control your indoor smart trainer with this watch. Uh, the device has AMP Plus as well as Bluetooth connectivity. So you're able to connect to you know all the different types of bike technologies out there. Uh, I connected to this watch to three power meter brands uh, as well as a Garmin Varia radar where the watch can actually display real-time traffic information uh, right on the watch itself and kind of give you a vibration when a car is coming up on you from behind. Running has also been great with the Forerunner 945 LTE. Uh, I found the GPS accuracy to be uh, in line or I would say better than pretty much all the watches that I've tested on this channel. Uh, you have virtual run, indoor track options, uh, treadmill running, a trail running in track mode, well, which will kind of you know tighten up your GPS display and give you more accurate splits when you're on the track. Uh, you've also got some cool modes like a, a swim run mode, uh, which is kind of a super cool and very interesting kind of new event style uh, that they are doing here in the Pacific Northwest. It's just something I haven't tried just yet. Uh, and it has an ultra run mode, uh, which is nice because you can actually use your splits at aid stations and calculate your total aid station time. So basically, you know, every single thing that any of the other Garmin watches can do, uh, they've put in this watch. And that's, you know, as of now, as of this video posting, uh, which is late 2021, uh, that could change in the future. And I'll also remind you that Garmin doesn't provide any sort of running power metric. Uh, that is something that some brands like Coros or Polar will do. Uh, I've always described this as kind of an estimation of running power, uh, but that's kind of a rabbit hole that I definitely don't want to get into. But there's definitely a lot more to this watch. Uh, and these aren't necessarily exclusive to the 945 LTE, uh, but you also get uh, daily suggested workouts based on your current training, uh, how your training has been going and how recovered you are, or you can have training plans that can be synced over to the watch 
from places like Training Peaks, uh, if that's something that you and your coach use for planning. Or there's something called Garmin Coach, where you can get you know a structured training plan for popular running and racing distances. Uh, you get Garmin's Pace Pro feature that helps you pace your particular race, and it actually takes into account things like hill. You can get things like race predictor tools based on your recent workouts, giving you kind of some idea as to what you may be able to do on races at different particular distances. Uh, and during your run or bike, you get a pop-up with your current performance conditions. Uh, for me, it usually takes about a mile, and then it's kind of looking at stuff like your pace and your current heart rate, and looking at your history to give you some feedback as to how ready you are for that particular workout. And then after the workout, uh, Garmin will kind of estimate how much recovery they think that you need before your next workout and display that in hours or days, you know, right after your workout. On this watch, you also have mapping, you have courses, you have turn by turn directions. Uh, if you have a course loaded on this watch, you will be able to see, you know, upcoming hills uh, with Garmin's Climb Pro feature, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's not something that I've used that much on the, this particular watch. It's definitely something that I've used more on Garmin cycling computers. Uh, but if you are racing, you know, some sort of uh, hilly race or you're doing some sort of event that has significant climbs, this tool is really nice for knowing about those upcoming hills and seeing how you're doing during a particular climb. And then, you know, I would say one of the big selling points uh, for this watch, you know, as well as the original 945, is the fact that you have onboard music storage. So you can download onto this watch a thousand songs. Uh, I've used it for a few podcasts, uh, but typically, you know, I don't stress about it too much. Typically, I'll just carry a phone and stream, you know, whatever it is that I wanna listen to. Uh, also on this watch, as well as the old 945, is Garmin Pay, uh, which I've yet to test uh, because they don't support my bank. Uh, but I'll leave a link to the participating banks in the description of this video if that's something that's really important to you. And it feels like, you know, there's a million more features. Uh, but real quickly, I do want to talk to you guys about a few things that I love and a few things that I wish were different. And first of all, you know, I am a huge fan of how accurate Garmin's new GPS chips uh, and these devices have been lately. Does it really matter, you know, if your run is 0 0.01 miles off? You know, probably not. Uh, but it's nice to know that when I'm, you know, mapping out a high school cross country race, that my watch is going to be pretty accurate. It's gonna be a great option to kind of double check, you know, some sort of measuring wheel or something like that. Uh, next, I absolutely love Garmin's sleep tracking. Uh, it's something that I pretty much check every single day. As soon as I wake up, I just scroll down to that new widget and check it out, see how I slept. And it, it's just something that I'm trying to work on and improve. And lastly, you know, I, I have a lot of trust in this device. I'm, I'm really confident that it's not gonna crap out on me in the middle of some sort of important triathlon race. I did two races with this particular watch over the past 100 days and it was fine. It worked as expected. Now, notice that I didn't mention the actual LTE functionality in my love section of this particular video. It's a cool feature. Uh, it's just not a deal breaker for me. I, I think it could be in the future. I wish there were more LTE functionality to this watch. Personally, I'd love to see, you know, some sort of messaging or some sort of way to send canned responses to people who are watching your live tracking events. Uh, I also noticed about, you know, a 10% reduction in battery when using this, you know, just as an everyday smartwatch compared to the 945. And I would love to see Garmin make a watch, you know, kind of like this, but that would last, you know, two to three weeks of heavy usage on a single charge. Uh, I recently tested the Garmin Enduro and I loved having that extra battery life. The Garmin 945 LTE also has about a 15% dimmer backlight when compared to the 945. You know, I really hesitate to even mention that because the 945 is still the brightest backlight that I've ever tested and the backlight is perfectly fine on both of these watches. So there really isn't a lot to complain about with this watch. But I'll try to wrap it up with kind of buying suggestions. You know, do I recommend buying this watch? Absolutely. I, I really do think it's the best triathlon watch on the market today. You know, should you pick the 945 or the 945 LTE? 
Well, the 945 is still a fantastic watch, uh, but for 50 extra dollars, you get a more accurate GPS chip, you get a more accurate heart rate monitor in theory, uh, you get you know the option to use this with those LTE services, which for me, you know, might only be something that I would use in the summer months or during Ironman training when you're doing some of those really long bike rides. Uh, and my gut feeling is that these, you know, optional LTE services are going to be, you know, part of a lot of the Garmin future wearables. So I expect that they're going to expand on the actual LTE features in the near future. And it's gonna be something that I'm, I'm really excited about. I think they're gonna have some pretty cool stuff in the future. But these are just my thoughts. And, you know, I would rather hear from you guys. So, you know, let me know. What do you guys think of the 945 LTE? Is it something that you guys would purchase? Uh, as always, don't forget to get out there, swim, bike, run, rinse, and then repeat it all over again. And we will see you guys in the next one.